All right, McCone turned 37. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> the rating machine has been turned back on. <laughs> this is uh, kind of what drowning feels like. You know, you kind of catch a half breath and then uh, you're just back under a ton of elves. Uh, so yeah, this doesn't go fantastic for us. We'll take a look at some of these. I don't even take a look at all of them. Um, this is a situation where, like, really, this is our Draco Lion. Should have been moving this guy around. He's just been kind of parked in this province for a while. Because uh, it is a high-value province, is where we're getting the graphs from. We do want to hold on to this, but, uh, yeah. So this guy, a little bit of different gearing. You know, he's got a Coral Blade uh, for a little bit of extra HP, probably. Uh, but he's, he can cast uh, Poison Resistance on himself. Um, and, of course, you know, all of his thugs can. It's just a Nature 1 spell. And with like 25 poison resistance, you're pretty immune to almost every poison out there, um, including the poison, this dragon gas. Like, what is it? I don't actually think it tells you the strength of the poison. Um, I'm not familiar enough with poison damage to know if like negative three is high or low, but usually they say like strong poison or death poison. So you can see he's gonna do like pretty much nothing to this guy, especially because he's got uh, regeneration on, so, you know, if we were, see if we're actually, yeah, zero points of damage, whole bunch of zero, um, and he's, you know, killing militia, <laughs> as they do. Uh, we're killing, you know, RPD as well. Um, anyway, if this guy had been moving around, you know, it's less likely that he's going to put poison resistance into, like, everybody's script, um, or, like, if he was moving around, then, you know, you have to waste time putting poison resistance into everybody's script. Um, but, you know, I was being lazy, and I just left him there, so that's kind of sad. And then something slightly different in Cormark. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, an air elemental kill squad that has uh, Cloud trapezed in and is going after, you know, our pr pretty much our strongest, like, counter rating group. These are both heroes. I forget. Okay, yeah, that trait is not good. Uh, heroic toughness is nice. Um... So yeah, this is, you know, always a, always a danger, uh, you know, it's a, one of the problems with making, like, well, I guess in this case it doesn't even matter, because uh, they probably cloud trapezed in, so this is just a danger of not being stealthy. You know, one of the advantages of being stealthy is, you know, you can ditch stuff like this. <laughs> the guy who's supposed to buff him, you can see he goes down almost immediately, because, uh, you know, these full-size air elementals definitely can trample. Let's see, this one's been injured. Um, although the size fives can also trample because we are giants, but we're only size four giants. Um, and you can see like, yeah, this is really, really hurting. You know, even when you evade the attack, right, you're always taking like one point of damage from the trample. Um, and then, you know, sometimes they just trample for a significant amount of damage. Um, so like, yeah, you can see like this. Air elementals are really, really dangerous. So even though we are super shock resistant, um, you know, the trampling is a problem. Now, like once we bring it down, you know, to size four, and this fire shield is probably not really helping us too much. Um, yeah, and then we're routing, you know, still have morale problems. Yeah, no morale hat on him. Um, and I think he picked up, yeah, battle fright. <laughs> so he's gonna be even less useful um, in the future, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, the pole marks don't do bad, right? Because we have magic weapons, so we go right through ethereal. Um, and, you know, while we can be trampled by full size, once we get them down to size four, yeah, there goes our other pole mark. Um, you know, we're more resistant uh, to air elemental kill squads, but definitely still dangerous. You know, this is not cheap, obviously, for him to do... Uh, you know, that's, I think Cloud Trapeze is like, what, three air gems a pop? You know, so I mean, it's like 24 air gems just to get these guys into position. Um, and then, you know, however many air gems, he probably summoned six air elementals. So, you know, another six gems or maybe 12 gems if he's doubling up on the gems. I think these guys are only air two. Yeah, so they would have to double up on gems because it's you need air three to cast. So I mean, that's a lot of air gems to take this out. Now, I mean, that's it, you know, I mean, losing two hero ball marks with their gear, uh, you know, we, we probably lost roughly equivalent gems, so probably worth it. Um, and then, of course, these are stealthy. Yeah, so <laughs> really stealthy. Wow, 85. Um, you know, and they're they're assassins, <laughs> so they're pretty pretty scary assassins, honestly. Um, but anyway, they can stealth out. Like one of the problems with, you know, doing like some pretty deep rating. I can take a look at where this is, but you know, this is somewhat well. It was behind the lines, <laughs> not so much now. They've been raided a bunch. Um, but anyway, one of the problems with you know cloud trapezing a bunch of people in is that then sometimes it can be hard to like get that 
group out but of course you know they can just stealth away and it's no problem and then we'll take a one take a look at uh, wood of many paths here I think this is which is this yeah this is one of our uh, e4s uh, fire 2 e4 right so this is incinerate and you know we have some gigantes and you know a little bit of PD you know, it's not great PD but you know um, he's got one of these sprites I think been summoned in yeah from this uh, shillelagh uh, which is, you know, national. I think only TNN can forge it in early age, but um, yeah, mo most nations can't. It's not like a fantastic weapon, uh, but, you know, it does give you luck, which is nice. Uh, and the sprite, like, a lot of times doesn't matter, um, but although it is always nice to have, like, you know, a little bit of cover. Uh, but this elf shot that they have uh, is pretty interesting and can be pretty good. It does fatigue damage, a ton of fatigue damage. Um, they don't, it doesn't actually do any, you know, real damage. And then, you know, you don't want them to get into melee. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you can knock out like it's really good anti-thug stuff. Um, you know, because you have some thug and he gets hit with just a couple of those. And I mean, you know, it has the normal problem of <laughs> accuracy with bows. Uh, but, you know, once they get close, like, and it doesn't take that many shots to really mess up a thug, um, especially if they're not, like, fatigue neutral. Um, and, you know, if they're fatigue neutral, like, you can see if somebody got hit here. Um, now it looks like he missed, or maybe resisted. I'm pretty sure it's an MR check. Yeah, magic resistance negates. So, definitely has its set of problems. Um, and, you know, you only get the one from the shillelagh, but... I'm pretty sure, yeah, this guy you know, gets nailed. So you can see, like, you know, he's up to 90 fatigue just from getting hit from, like, one shot. Um, so against, like, troops, you know, it's not fantastic. But, you know, if you're up against, like, thugs, it can be pretty nasty if you get hit with those. Um, and it looks like this guy is just spell casting. Um, fairly kitted out. Um, you can see, like, yeah, he's got more fire resistance, fire resistance 10 on him. Um, so that's definitely, you know, a response to the incinerates that we've been doing. And then here comes our E4. Yeah, still fire shielding. Ugh, look at all that fatigue. Not good. What else did you do on yourself? Like, honestly, most stone skin, like, yeah, whatever. Temper flesh. Eh. Um, Probably should cut the temper flesh. The stone skin, it doesn't take too much fatigue, and like you never know, like you know, there's gonna be some archers or something. Like these guys have enough health, but I don't know. Anytime you're in robes, it's like getting up to 20 protection is like really gonna help a lot. Um, stone skin doesn't take that much fatigue, but definitely could cut the fire shield and the uh, temper flesh. Um, and you can see that this guy's definitely cleaning up. He's got that extra attack uh, from the dancing trident. Although you know, even with 10 fire resistance, right? That's a uh, incinerate coming in. Um, yeah, you know, seven points of damage. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, Incinerate's a really good spell. You know, Fire Resistance 10 is definitely not going to keep you 100% safe, but I'm pretty sure this guy has, yeah, regeneration on him. So, you know, and he has more hit points, right, with the Coral Blade. Uh, so, you know, we really kind of need to, this is another issue of, you know, our fatigue being so high, is that, you know, we're not going to be able to put out Incinerates as quickly. And, you know, we're going to need him, we're going to need to get him out more quickly to overwhelm this guy with his, you know, better fire uh, resistance, you know, and his regeneration. You can see, like, we're just not quite getting enough harass uh, from our Gigantes. Like, we don't have enough units here. And he was able to kill off our PD, like, too quickly. Um, so, yeah, I mean... With defense this high, like, you really need to pack in, like, a lot of guys. Um, and I'm not really sure that that's, like, a super effective way to go after these guys. Um, certainly you can see that the Gigantes are, you know, basically doing nothing. They just don't have high enough attack skill. Um, and it doesn't help that some of them, yeah, <laughs> like, probably a few more of these guys got hit um, with, you know, those elf shots. Although, you know, they have pretty high encumbrance anyway. Um, this is actually, yeah, the having extra trouble from the heat. Maybe another reason to do the lightly armor ones um, if you you know think fatigue is going to be a big issue um, hadn't really considered that before but yeah these guys do have like pretty high um, pretty high encumbrance although they are getting hurt you know because we took heat scales uh, so you looks like somebody got a hit in there yeah this guy is not fatigue neutral it looks like either does he have any yeah he has no reinvigoration and his encumbrance is very high but he does have oh no that's just swiftness so yeah like not terrible but this combat is taking a second um, so yeah, and he is, he's starting to fatigue out, so I think that was a Gigante that got the hit in. Who? Where did you go? 23 points of damage, yeah. Um, ah, <laughs> luck. So there you go, there's the Shillelagh coming into play, right? And I mean, you know, luck is, luck is useful. Um, 
yeah wow so this became zero interesting um yeah okay because it just negated the damage entirely i didn't realize so that's kind of cool um so you know he took zero damage from this um and then this is a hit that you know wasn't going to kill him so it just brought him down so we are starting to land hits now um which is you know good but so maybe not totally useless um and you know of course we had some of our human troops running in so we had more attacks uh, so, you know, possibly that's why we started to land hits. And you can see the incinerates are still doing work, but it's just not going fast enough. Um, you know, he's definitely taking some hits from the fire shield, but, you know, you can see it didn't really matter. Uh, now, we did manage to escape, at least. So, you know, maybe, like, Temper Flesh was useful there in terms of keeping him alive. Uh, but, yeah, that did not go well. And, yeah, the rest of these battles, not super interesting. Let's see, uh, the Draco Lion, this is the Air Elemental Kill Squad. You know, there's just some PD. Um, you know, these She Lords are going to do fine against PD always. PD, PD. Uh, yeah, this is the one we just watched. Uh, yeah, more PD. And then this was our, our poor Locos that we sent out, Our just our commander. <laughs> you know, he, he got ganked as well. Um, and then, yeah, we had some Magic Sight searches. They all missed. Um, and then we got to watch... Uh, TNN knock out some barbarians. Let me take a quick look at that. This at least tells us, you know, where some of his sacreds are, like a good chunk of his sacreds. Looks like he's also getting cavemen from somewhere. And then, of course, you know, these warriors who I've, you know, talked about before, uh, they're, they're pretty decent, undisciplined, uh, kind of similar to barbarians in a lot of ways, uh, but a little better, I would say. Um, but anyway, you know, his sacreds are going to have no trouble with these barbarians, but I do like to leave scouts, you know, on independence and other people's territory, because, uh, you know, you can kind of get to see, like, what they're using a lot of times. Often you're not going to see, like, an entire army, but, you know, just seeing their thugs in action can be really useful. And then we had a few events. Uh, let's see, yeah, people disappearing. Maybe it's demons. Yeah, they probably just ran away. 200% tax income, which is really nice, but this is not a very valuable province, so, eh. Um, and then ter 10 air gems, uh, which is really nice, actually. So thank you, Luck, on that. And then, you know, we pa patrolled out a uh, Pangean scout. I'm just checking out Hinnom, I guess. Not too worried about that. I know they're pretty busy uh, with Ermor. And then, yeah, some other stuff we don't really care about. And as you can see, uh, you know, we, we lost a lot of ground uh, in the raiding war here. Um, looks like, you know, more focused around, like, our actual capital, Macon, now. Um, so maybe expecting an attempt you know here i mean you know right anytime that he has lots of retreat paths available now to him um you know more likely like yeah we still control like everything around Hinnom basically uh so yeah we are not sending out as many raiding uh squads ourselves because you know, with uh, the kill squad, let's see, the kill squad was here, right? So you can see it was pretty deep, but of course, <laughs> now he controls a bunch of this territory. So, you know, yeah. Um, but anyway, you know, having to worry about this, like, you know, I don't know how many of these, I really don't know, like, how many of these he can have. Probably not a ton, I feel like. But, you know, we do have to consider that, like, well, like, anything that we send out could get jumped on you know, by a crap ton of air elementals, right? So, you know, I mean, it's like, you can kind of handle that, like, two different ways. So just send out, like, a bunch of cheap stuff that you don't care about. But he has enough of, like, his just regular thugs. Um, you know, so it's like, send out, like, 20 Peltas with a regular commander. Um, you know, which should work. Like, against especially, like, 1 PD or even, like, 6 PD, they're probably going to win, you know, pretty consistently. Uh, but then, you know, all it takes is they run into, like, just one of his thugs, um, you know, unkitted, and they're just going to tear through that. So it's kind of problematic. Um, but, of course, they're not really worth dropping a ton of, you know, air elementals on, right? So you can go the route of, like, really cheap raiders where it's like, yeah, go ahead, drop air elementals on them. <laughs> like, I can pump out more Peltast. But considering that he has a bunch of his commander thugs running around um, that can clean them out really cheap, um, it's, that's probably not cost effective in this situation. So I'm trying to go the other route, right? Where it's like any raiding squad that we build needs to be able to deal with having a bunch of air elementals dropped on top of them. Um, so something like this, you know, uh, this is it, not perfect. Um, you know, this guy is, you know, for incinerate, like maybe should have more gigantes. Like I think like two full sets of bodyguards would be nice. Um, but of course, you know, we are somewhat limited. Um, you know, we have taken quite a few casualties. Uh, so, you know, we don't have a ton available. 
Um, but anyway, like, you know, these guys are pretty good against air elementals. You know, they can get trampled, but, you know, with their magic weapon and they're dealing so much damage, um, you know, they should be able to cut them down to size. Because, again, once they hit size 4, they're way less dangerous, at least to our polo marks. Obviously, these guys do not have shock resistance, so, you know, even the size 4 ones are fairly dangerous for these guys. Um, but yeah, so, you know, trying to mix in more Gigantes so that if we have a bunch of air elementals dropped on them, you know, they'll be able to deal with it better. Uh, so something like this, let's see, the other squad we're sending out should look, yeah, fairly similar. You know, no no E4. Um, we probably just don't have, eh, we have a fire E4. We, we could have sent this guy out. But of course, you know, we do want to cover this fort construction. This is very important to us. Um, so, you know, we're bringing more stuff in. I mean, you know, this is kind of like, you know, I mean, this is what we have more or less. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, we're mostly relying on our PD uh, for other stuff. Uh, we have like, what, one guy patrolling here. Um, I think he's got a, uh, yeah, you know, he's got kind of like a nut squad here of like some of these monsters. Uh, you know, this guy can fly to the back and he's got this petrifying gas. Um, so yeah, hopefully that'll do something. And then, you know, this guy's got his like gaze of death, right? So, you know, we'll see. <laughs> and, you know, this guy's just going to spam out like some moths to the earth. So like a little bit of damage, you know, to supplement, you know, our, our ridiculous amount of PD. Uh, and, you know, pretty similar situation in Hinom. You know, just have like our one like air, lesser air elemental guy. Uh, and, you know, that's, uh, we, you know, we added a few other things, you know, so we just got, this is really just more for, again, the unrest, of course. Um, but yeah, this guy also going to do like a little bit of moths of the earth, you know, try to assist. And, you know, it always hurts because, I mean, you know, this is like 14 research a turn we're not getting. You know, this is more research a turn we're not getting. So, I mean, that's just part of it. Um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, that's more or less what we're up to. We're pulling, you know, some of our older raiding squads, you know, like this um, and this back. This maybe arguably we could keep out there, but, you know, really do like to have incinerate mixed in. You know, I think this earth meld and earth grip is... A little rough especially because you know we don't really have a lot else other than these gigantes um so yeah i would like to kind of you know beef up these anti-raiding squads or you know whatever raiding squads uh so that you know if they get dropped on they're less likely to get completely wiped out you know because of course it's very sad to you know lose geared polo marks and etc um so yeah you know kind of digging in you know still trying to build our fort um still trying to do some raiding uh, but yeah, it's going to take us a second because our rating groups are going to have to get significantly beefier uh, to deal with this. And we are also twice borning our goddess this turn, uh, which, you know, takes a ton of death gems. You know, I think it's like 30 death gems um, or something like that. Uh, yeah, because she's size six and it's like five per per size point. Um, so yeah, that's a ton of death gems. So this is kind of arguable, um, especially since, of course, you know, we can call our goddess back. But, you know, like I said, I don't really have a ton of priests. And of course, our priests are also mages. So, you know, if we're calling our goddess back, you know, then we're not researching with those guys and it's going to take a while. Um, so, you know, we have the death gems. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, still haven't really used her in combat yet. But, you know, I mean, she is kind of one of the big deterrents uh, for, you know, TNN hopping on this, like, province in force. Uh, so, you know, if we do lose her, being able to get her back right away uh, is going to be really nice. Um, so, you know, kind of arguable, but you can give it a shot. Uh, definitely, you know, it's, uh, it's not going great. So, you know, we kind of need to protect, you know, what, what assets we have right now. Um, so, yeah, I think research, you know, pretty similar. Yeah, we've talked about this. Um, so, yeah, I think it covers turn 37. All right, McCone, turn 38, uh, twice born, successfully cast. And then, yeah, a couple battles, nothing particularly interesting. Um, you know, this is just one of our beefed up groups taking on minimal PD, no problems. Same thing here. Uh, and then these battles are just pings, right? So he's just pinging both of the capitals that we have. You know, continuing to force us to keep guessing about, you know, where he's going to end up going, which is definitely effective. Um, and then, of course, you know, some some events, <laughs> more calves with three heads, ancient treasure. That's always nice. Not particularly big, but well, we'll take it. We need the gold. And then, hey, there you go. Now we're talking <laughs> even more gold. Uh, so, yeah, definitely helpful uh, that we have luck right now because, uh, you know, we're definitely not getting income uh, from <laughs> the territory that we don't really have anymore. 
Uh, and then, yeah, the, I think this is the, necro the necromancer. You know, he's cruising around, uh, doing his thing. And if it was the necromancer, someone defeated him. So I'm not 100% sure because, uh, you know, slightly different title. Maybe this is related to the Demon Gate. Not sure if those are two different world events going on. Um, but anyway, the necromancer is defeated. So good work to whoever did that. Uh, and then, yeah, we get very deadly disease spreading. Um, so this is... Uh, actually like a Bane Venom charm, which is an item, you can it's a miscellaneous slot, and it diseases whoever it's on. Um, so oftentimes you put it on like undead units, um, and then it spreads diseases uh, when it's in a province, or in any province, including your own. Um, and, you know, one of the things it does is just, you know, kill some population that's there, which is annoying, but, you know, I mean, it's not that many. Um, so you'd need quite a few before, like, the population was really, like, a concern, the population loss. But the bigger issue is that it has a chance to disease any, like, unit or commander that is in the province with it. Um, so, you know, I mean, this is a really good thing to use, like, on enemy doom stacks and stuff like that, or, you know, any stack of a ton of mages. Um, so, yeah. I don't love these items. <laughs> I just, I feel like it's it's one of those things that uh, the more you play Dominions, like, the more you start to just use these kind of items. Um, you know, it's not exactly, like, sporting. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the like the chemical warfare of the Dominions world. And I mean, Dominions is filled with like really nasty spells and items and et cetera. So anyway, a totally valid way to play. Um, I haven't really like dove down that rabbit hole yet, um, but I, I know there can be some really effective uses for it. Um, I was kind of extra annoyed by this uh, because it's, you know, we don't know for sure, but um, I know that like Calum had you know told told me is like one of the things he's doing to help is you know sending a bunch of bane venom charms down uh, you know to disease uh, TNN's guys, uh, which you know I was not thrilled to hear about because you know I mean it's like this has been a clean war um, you know there's, I don't think there's any hard feelings between me or the TNN player uh, you know which I, I value definitely and. You know, Bane Venom charms, like, when you break those out, that's, you know, it's it's a thing. <laughs> you know, it definitely changes the character of the war a little bit. Um, and then, of course, too, because TNN doesn't know, like, who's using them, right? Unless you catch the person carrying it, like, you patrol out the person carrying it. Uh, you know, if this is going to have any consequences, they're probably going to rebound on me, right? Because it's a natural thing to assume is that, like, oh, yeah, it's my enemy that's doing this to me. So, like, now, you know, he's going to send Bane, of, Bane Venom charms against me. Um, you know, so we don't know that this is Calum's, but, like, the position of it is, like, you know, it could very well be, you know, he's, like, flying in and then going to fly farther. Um, and I was pretty annoyed because it's kind of like, I mean, if you're, don't move Bane Venom Charms, like, through your allies' provinces. Like, at least I don't have any troops, you know, or commanders there. But, I don't know. It's just not good form. Now, it could be, you know, someone else. Um, you know, you never know, right? It's never a bad thing to, like, disease up somebody else's uh, stacks. But, uh, yeah, I definitely think most people consider it, like, breaking a non-aggression pact. I certainly would. Um, so, you know... Use with caution. Um, yeah, I wasn't thrilled to see that. You know that it's a Bane Venom charm, right? Because it's not an unexpected event. Because you definitely can, like, have people dying from diseases. Uh, but, you know, it's listed as an unexpected event. And then you click through and it's like, oh, it's a deadly disease and people have died and blah, blah, or, like, plague or whatever. Um, but this is listed, like, separately. So, yeah, this is a Bane Venom charm. Um, so, yeah, that's that's great. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just part of it. It's just part of Dominion. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta deal with it. You know, have patrollers. Lots of reasons to have patrollers. And that's one of them. Um, speaking of, we caught a uh, Arcosophali scout, you know, so they're just interested in this war. Uh, you know, one of the people we're trying to convince to come in. Uh, so no doubt they want to see, you know, our battles and see how it's going. Um, and then, yeah, Ulm was eliminated, uh, which actually I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, because it just took a second, you know, to capture all their last provinces. Um, so anyway, Ulm is completely out. And uh, yeah, what are we doing this turn? Um, not a ton. Again, you know, we're, we're really like a ton of our forces, obviously, again, are tied up, you know, just trying to keep this construction safe. <laughs> Two more months. So we'll see. It's kind of looking like we're going to make it. Um, building a temple here, probably wouldn't have done that, um, you know, 
in retrospect, especially since, you know, this guy could be researching. There's really no reason to build it early, um, you know, so I could have waited like one turn um, and then it's like, you know, then the fort would have finished and we're just risking gold that we don't have to. At the same time, it's like this is so much of our stuff. I think I was just kind of of the mood of like, well, <laughs> if we lose this, it's game over anyway, so who cares? You know, let's get the temple up. Um, but yeah, probably not the most optimal play. Uh, reviving some whites uh, with our goddess using up more death gems. Um, yeah, you know, whites are pretty good, like, anti-elite units. Like, they have the Bane Blade, um, which is, is pretty nasty. You know, it gives units decay. Uh, they are surrounded by a chill aura, uh, which is a little unusual. You know, McCone doesn't usually do, like, a lot of cold stuff or chill or whatever. Not going to be as effective, you know, because we're Heat 3. Um, but TNN Sacreds don't have cold resistance. Uh, so, you know, it's just sort of a different threat vector that, you know, he might not be expecting. Uh, you know, we should be able to, like, snipe a, uh, one of his thugs, you know, with some whites, potentially, so, yeah, you know, we have the death gems, like, you know, why not use it, it's, it's a little dire right now, um, and then, yeah, just using our existing, like, you know, raiding groups to continue raiding, would like to get more groups out, but again, you know, kind of just waiting until this fort construction finishes, don't really have enough stuff, um, you know, to commit otherwise, uh, doing significantly more patrolling on our forts this turn. I think we're going to have, yeah, Flaming Arrows, uh, which, you know, will help for our Javelins. Um, and then probably just, like, yeah, more Maws of the Earth and etc. cetera. Uh, no real, like, you know, just relying completely on our PD <laughs> for troops here. Um, and then, yeah, doing a decent amount of patrolling on Hinnom as well, uh, some of which, you know, is actually our Peltasts, uh, also some Flaming Arrows and, you know, Maws of the Earth. Um, cause yeah, I mean, you know, both of these got ping this turn, so there's a good chance that, you know, he jumps and, you know, we don't really know. It's like, yeah, you know, he's done more raiding around Macone, but I mean, you know, it, he's the elves. So like he could just, right. That could be a faint, right. Make me expect that like, oh yeah, he's going to hit Macone and then bam, you know, he hits him. Hit so he pinged both this turn, so, you know, we're responding with patrolling, uh, you know, which, yeah, again, like, really hurts in terms of the research, but, you know, if we, if these forts get locked down, you know, losing this PD investment, like, we just don't really have anything to replace it with, so probably worth it, um, painful as it is, um, so, yeah, and then I don't think, yeah, research is the same again. Our research is not going very fast because we don't have a ton of mages and they're patrolling and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then, yeah, our scouting, yeah, you know, still just kind of pushing scouts around. Uh, it looks like Arco, you know, is down here bordering Russ. Um, you know, we don't really have a ton of scouts loose getting us information on the world. I had heard that Ermor and Ur were fighting, so I was kind of curious to see if I could catch any of those battles, but so far haven't been able to. Um, and then, you know, still have a few scouts, you know, down in TNN, kind of just, you know, scout on most of his forts. Um, so just trying to keep an eye, you know, obviously with the glamour, you know, we're not going to be able to see all of his armies, but... We will be able to see, you know, if he brings up a bunch of non-stealthy, like, siege chaff and, like, some of his mages and etc. Um, so it's still useful to have scouts, uh, even in elven territory. And yeah, I think that covers turn 38. Alright, McCone, turn 39, uh, and we're getting mugged again <laughs> by the elves, as happens. We did finish a uh, construction floor, so that's nice. Moving on to some more evocation. Uh, dire Porton, always good news. Uh, so this is Arcus of Folly grabbing uh, Mother Oak. Uh, I think, I can't remember if, it's, if it was up before. Um, but yeah, this is not the worst. I mean, it could go either way, right? They're our neighbors, so that's not great. But, you know, we're trying to convince them to come in against TNN with us. Uh, so, you know, as an ally, it'd be kind of nice that an ally has it. Of course, they could decide that, you know, maybe they just want to eat uh, a little bit of us. <laughs> in which case, it'd be bad. So, yeah, I don't know. Toss up. Um, but anyway, yeah, being mugged by the elves, uh, you know, just more stuff like I have at least just dropped down to, uh, to pretty much, well, okay, maybe that was a little more than one PD there, but mostly one PD everywhere, so we're not losing too much gold uh, to these guys. Um, and then we got hit in Macone, and this was not a ping, uh, so it was a good thing that we were patrolling. Uh, but it wasn't like, you know, a full stack or anything. This is sort of, you know, a, a thug army, if you will. Uh, pretty kitted out. Um, fairly similar kitting, you know, kind of to what we've seen. Honestly, like a bit of a random grab bag. I think, yeah, these amulets of giants uh, increase their size. Um, does he have 
No. Yeah, so they're normally size 3, uh, so I was thinking maybe he had uh, larger on his blast, but he doesn't. Um, so yeah, just really like doubling down on like more hit points because uh, the enlargement increases their hit points and then you know you get this coral blade uh, So they get more you know hit points from that and I think this damage I think it takes like one turn so it's like when you give them the coral blade you have to Wait one turn before their hit points You know actually like reflect their new total from the blade So I think that's what this damage um, is about uh, but they will regenerate it up uh, during the battle, right? Yeah, you can see some of these guys. This guy came in, you know, without any damage on him. Um, you know, he has the, the higher hit points. Um, so anyway, yeah, a lot of them, like, dual-wielding items, weapons. Not all of them. Half of them. Uh, so, you know, just more killy, right? He's got the shillelagh for the luck. Uh, and, you know, a little bit of the, the sprites. Um, and then, you know, fire plate is good. Anti-incinerate and etc. Um, extra attacks from the dancing trident. Um, and these guys, similar kind of story, yeah, Dancing Trident, the, the pelt we've talked about, you know, solid armor when you're worried about defense, a little bit of shock resistance, never hurts. May have gotten this off of us, <laughs> so, you know, there may be some uh, free gear at play, uh, but, you know, we have a whole host of uh, PD and a few casters and a few monsters, um, so, yeah, you know, I honestly, like, we'll see. I really have no idea how this is going to go. We're really going to struggle to connect, like, most of this stuff is just, like, forget about it. Um, you know, some mist forms, we're getting flaming arrows up, which will help. Legions of Steel, probably not really going to matter that much. Um, although, for these guys, maybe, you know, I mean, Protection 23 is going to be, like, pretty annoying for them to get through. They don't do, yeah, I mean, you know, they'll, they'll chip their way through, definitely, like the Coral Blades and etc. Um, but, yeah, let's see, do we have a flyer? You know, the sprites are shooting at the rear, it looks like. Okay, yeah, here's our flyer. Um, so I don't know, he's got the poison gas. I don't see, you know, obviously they could cast poison resistance on themselves, but they have a lot of things that they want to cast, so they might not actually do that. Yeah, mist form, flight, and he's trying to do personal regeneration. Uh, but you can see, like, I don't know if he was actually interrupted, but he didn't finish casting it, at least not yet. Um, so, you know, just another reason that, like, you know, flying stuff, really useful, um, especially against, like, thugs and super combatants, because you interrupt their script. Um, so, yeah, and then there's some case of death. That's not great news, uh, because, yeah, like, ideally, you know, it's getting caught up on the sprites. You know, again, just a little bit of chaff to like you know delay stuff and of course we're getting friendly fire um you know here it comes this is the the javelins with the flaming arrows which is really nice because yeah i mean you see mist form was dropping it down to just one damage but like yeah this guy does not have any fire resistance on him probably the plan was to put like elemental resistance on himself yeah like this guy who managed he didn't get you know bushwhacked by the uh the, what was that cockatrice or whatever whatever monster we threw at him um, you know, he's actually able to get through his script and get elemental resistance on him which is gonna help a lot against like those like flaming javelins uh, but the other guy didn't get it flaming javelins probably got him there um, these guys did get their elemental resistance although for whatever reason the javelins all decided that this was the spot um, yeah, most of our armor gigantes, you know, came over here against these two. They're going to be pretty tough to take down. These are the more killy ones. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we really actually kind of need these peltasts to get in and drive the defense down. Although, yeah, we are getting some javelins through. Um, even with this fire resistance, um, it looks like, you know, they do get a roll on top of, like, their normal damage. Uh, but yeah, okay, no, actually, it looks like it was the gigantes that were doing it. Okay, yeah, here's a javelin. So it's a mix. Um... What is his? His defense is still pretty high, so that Chiganti got pretty lucky <laughs> when he got his hit. Uh, this is not great, you know, the gaze of death. Like, I mean, we knew there was going to be friendly fire. This, hope, we were hoping that the friendly fire was, like, more going to hit, like, our Peltasts and stuff. Not, you know, our, I mean, again, these are PD Gigantes, so it doesn't matter as much. Um, really probably should have, okay, we're, you know, dumping out, like, a lesser fire elemental. Do we have, okay, no, we do have our polar marks. Our polar marks are set to advance and cast spells, so that's cool. Unfortunately, they're just doing like more buffs on our troops, which isn't really gonna help. Yeah, Strength of Giants down here. Okay, nice, it looks like we did take out this other group though. Um, so that's two of them down. Um, unfortunately, yeah, this Gaze of Death <laughs> is really just wiping out our guys. 
Um, and once you know, once they move up, there there is definitely some risk uh, for like an HP route. Um, I don't think this deals like any like feared. I don't know how this guy got damaged. Um, how did he? Ah, yes, <laughs> excellent. So, wow, more than once. So he hit himself with his own uh, gaze of death three times <laughs> at least. <laughs> so. There you go, Basilisk hit Basilisk. Maybe it like reflected off of like one of these guys' shields or something, and he saw himself. <laughs> it was like, ooh. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, we've cleaned out our our better Gigantes. We've mostly thrown all the javelins, um, and then of course, you know, we're continuing to wipe out our guys. Uh, I think he killed himself. Finally, let's see. Yeah, he just you know, he saw his own reflection too many times. Yeah, he's dead. What? I mean, it, it must have been his own. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> In case it death. So I don't know if that guy really helped us. Um, but he's he's gone now, regardless. Uh, you know, our, our polar marks have moved up. Um, so let's see, what are they? Yeah, Iron Warriors. We just don't really have like the right evocation research. Um, it is a shame that they're not choosing to cast uh, you know, I didn't have him cast Phoenix Power, right? So they're only fire two. Um, and that's just a regular Gigante. Yeah, only fire two. Uh, so yeah, and I guess they don't they're never gonna cast that on themselves So they won't boost themselves up so they can't actually cast incinerate and you know with the fire resistance that these guys have like the lesser fire spells um, They probably just feel that it's like it's not worth it uh, Which you know, I, I would say they're probably wrong about Because um, like iron warriors and stuff is like it's just never gonna matter like another strength of giants eh, You know, I mean don't get me wrong like be nice okay these guys have flight uh, they must cast that on themselves so it looks like they routed which is good um because yeah i'm not sure you know the fire elemental maybe um he's a lesser so you know this guy's taking his time what is he no he's not asleep oh does he not have flight on himself no yeah he has flight um not really sure why why he's taking so much yeah there he goes uh, maybe he was asleep uh so yeah that uh <laughs> It wasn't perfect, but it more or less worked out. Um, so, I mean, you know, we lost our Basilisk. He got, yeah, 15 kills, uh, mostly our stuff, pretty much completely our stuff, including himself, which is impressive. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that's, like, normal for them, you know, to friendly fire themselves, but that seemed pretty consistent. You know, I mean, he hit himself at least three, like, what, four times? Because, you know, like, the killing blow. Um, so yeah, I guess, you know, basilisks are kind of like, you know, used once, <laughs> it seems like. Uh, but yeah, we didn't really lose, like, too much that, you know, we really cared about. Um, you know, we lost quite a bit of PD, but that's fine. And, you know, he lost two, two of his commanders, not the end of the world. They did have a decent amount of gear, um, which, some of which we got. So yeah, that was definitely a win for us. Um, so you like to see that, and then yeah, I think the rest of this not so interesting. You know, just losing more provinces, one PD, and then this was I think our counter raiding group. Yeah, um, and they ran into wait, no, they didn't. <laughs> they just ran into some PD, um, which is fine. Uh, where was it? Was it that was this one? Yeah, this one which is our other counter rating group, and they actually did run into, yeah, in fact, I wonder if this guy was retreating. This may have been the guy that was retreating, actually, because that may have been a magic phase of battle. Not 100% sure. Um, so yeah, but this is kind of the scenario we were talking about, right? This is where if you send out like 15, 20, um, uh, Peltasts, you know, they're just, they're gonna die for sure. Um, this guy's maybe cast to advance set to advance and cast spells and he's put himself to sleep with like legions of steel um which you know isn't the worst idea i guess but of course you know these guys aren't going to move up um but at least you know his bodyguards will prevent this guy from immediately killing him of course all this yeah he may have also taken an elf shot All right, let's just double check nope he just put himself to sleep um, but yeah, he's casting incinerates, so that's good. Um, but of course this guy does, he's one of the ones with the fire plate. Although it looks like he didn't do elemental resistance on himself. Yeah. How does he have shock and cold? That does kind of look like elemental resistance. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? He probably put barkskin on himself. Something like that. 
Yeah, uh, protection. Yeah, which is like the one area of effect bark skin. So yeah, it reduces his fire protection. Um, so yeah, incinerate is still totally viable, right? We've seen that before. Yeah, there you go, 18 damage. Um, so yeah, advancing cast spells. Yeah, probably the right move. It is a shame, you know, with the bodyguards, like it sort of changes the spell casting AI a little bit. So you're gonna see more of that, like legions of steel. You might see them like throw out like a strength of giants, which is like, okay, come on, we're already giants. It's not really necessary, buddy. But you know, the spell casting AI does love to to buff stuff. Um, and we don't actually get him. Uh, which is sad because we do lose two gigantes. So overall, this is like not really a win for us because you know we lost like 80 gold and like, these guys are limited recruitment and yada yada yada. And he doesn't actually lose anything, but we do at least get the province back. Um, and you know we can keep sending this group around. You know it's a little bit reduced, but um, you know it is like definitely a demonstration that it's like okay with these stronger groups, you know we don't we don't really have to worry as much you know about his raiders um and then hopefully they will be resistant to the air elemental kill squads but definitely i think like one two more casters would be really nice but you know one more caster for incinerate probably would net us the kill um so yeah i knew this group was a little bit light and i think this kind of you know demonstrates that but still you know i mean considering how things have been going not the worst result <laughs> so yeah uh, profit coming out uh, we also caught a battle between uh, ur and ermor uh, which we've been looking for i don't think this is particularly interesting yeah just like a little bit of pd although cavemen can be a little dangerous in a cave um but yeah this is a bane lord thug uh, this is i don't have a ton of luck with these guys myself um but they're decent, you know, they have like chill aura, which is cool, you know, quite a few uh, hit points, uh, which is nice, like solid skills. Um, and I'd say this is like pretty good kidding for him, you know, vine shield is never a bad choice, not like over kitted really. And then of course, boots of quickness is always good on the undead because they don't, you know, care about the encumbrance and the fatigue. So quickness doesn't mess them up as much. And then, you know, some rando sword you probably got for free or like whatever, just had it. Um, so just make sure that he has magic damage. Honestly, like maybe not even necessary. Um, oh wait, no, it is necessary because he put the shield on him. Um, normally they come with like a two handed sword, I forget, but it does like the uh, decay damage and it's decent. Um, but you know, if you're gonna put a shield on him, then you gotta replace the weapon. Otherwise they just punch with a fist, which isn't great. Um, so anyway, just kind of interesting to see like another thug in action. Ermor definitely struggles a bit, early age Ermor uh, struggles a bit to, you know, have thug chassis. So yeah, I think, you know, using Bane Lords with them definitely makes sense. And then some unexpected events. We got an Earth Gnome, just kind of whatever. Um, and then 200% tax, and probably another province that like doesn't make any money. Um, actually, no, no, we do make some money here, so that is really nice. Uh, so thank you, Luck. And then yeah, some patrolling. And so yeah, let's see. So what are we up to? Um, so let's see. We still have you know a few patrollers. Took a few guys off patrolling, I think, probably to create yeah another counter raiding squad. I'm guessing. Yeah, um, so, you know, like, we threw back one attempt, so, like, hopefully, you know, we're gonna have a moment, um, still, you know, some, still quite a bit of patrolling, actually, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're still pretty worried, like, obviously, and then, of course, you know, a bunch of raiding happened around here, so, more patrolling in, in Hinnom, because it's more likely we're gonna get hit by something here, probably, maybe, um, you know, don't really know for sure, um, it's, it's kind of looking like we're going to get this fort. Um, we'll see, right? Obviously, there's, you know, you, you could read this rating as being more focused on this fort. Um, so, you know, he, he has next turn uh, to, to hit this. But we have quite a bit here. You know, we have some of the whites now and stuff. Um, you know, we have our goddess who he has definitely avoided, um, you know, and quite a few casters and, like, other stuff. Uh, so yeah, well, you know, maybe the fort was the right play. <laughs> certainly, certainly it's going better uh, than, you know, throwing away our army in an attack. Uh, so we'll see. Um, you know, I've, there's still a decent chance that he hits this next turn. Uh, it's possible that he hits Hinnom. Relying on our PD and our patrollers. I uh, haven't really talked about recruitment in a while. You know, it's been pretty similar, like still continuing to pump out Polomarks. We've talked about that. Um, you know, Gigantes. And the Peltasts, um, you know, maybe too many Peltasts, but I do think, like, right now as it stands, um, the projectiles are generally more useful um, against, you know, his his raiders. 
Uh, they certainly can do air shield, and he's done that before. Um, but you know, still only 80% chance to block. Um, and with his defense being so gosh darn high, and then of course having like huge masses of peltas also helps drive down the defense. So you know, we can't really get like getting the human hoplites. They're actually kind of slow to mass because uh, the resource cost is really really high. Um, so we can't actually get that many of these guys. Um, so yeah, sort of like, you know, get the Peltas for the projectiles and driving the defense down and, you know, hopefully the Gigantes actually deliver some killing blows. Um, so yeah, trying to get more Archons, you know, they're just really good casters. Uh, it does take a second to bring them in, so that hurts, but, you know, starting to actually like build up, you know, okay, not a decent amount, but <laughs> more than before. So yeah, they're just really good casters. Um, and then, you know, the Polymarks are good. Uh, maybe like you know should have done more cyclopses but of course you know we are like pretty gosh darn broke um, and the cyclopses are even more expensive so yeah you know a bit of a toss-up um, and then other than that let's see I think we might have pulled yeah this is our our other raiding group that got hit right so they have fewer uh, gigantes in this squad so we're bringing him back and also just having him patrol so he's going to help you know buff up uh, the patrol on macone because it might get hit again um and you know we can kind of replenish it uh you know with more gigantes to get it like more full strength maybe send it out with an extra caster uh would kind of like to see that like again you know this is eh, not great um yeah, still don't love this script, but uh, and we're doing attacking instead of casting spells. Still kind of back and forth on that right now, but I think you know without like an area of effect weapon, um, you know they just he doesn't have high enough attack skill. He's just not going to connect. Um, but yeah, just haven't haven't fixed that yet. So not the worst group ever, but not fantastic. <laughs> so hopefully they don't run into anything. Uh, certainly they can take out PD. Uh, but yeah, once once we get this build, you know, we, it'll release. We'll have a lot more options in terms of like counter rating, you know, because we have a lot of like casters here and, you know, a lot of our troops here. So we should be able to raid, you know, more effectively, uh, which is going to be important. You know, you definitely, you know, at least again, showing the flag to Niflheim, um, you know, I think it's, you know, mostly just Kalem, who's our ally. Uh, so, you know, we shouldn't have to worry as much, you know, about retaking territory up here because he's less likely, like, to jump in and just decide that we're done, um, you know, because we're in closer contact with him. Uh, so we'll probably have a little bit more time, you know, recapture some of this territory. But, of course, like, you know, this is money and gems that we're not getting. So, yeah, <laughs> definitely want to get back out there and, and retake our territory. But... Got to get this fort up, you know, got to consider that anybody could get jumped on by a crap ton of air elementals now. Um, so, yeah, and I think research, yeah, we're going up to Evocation 5, we've talked about that. Um, yeah, probably the right choice uh, for where we're at right now. Research speed is definitely hurting, um, getting some more whites in, because, uh, yeah, like I said, I think they're a, a decent threat vector for us right now um, against, like, what we're facing. And, uh, yeah, just really trying to hold on at this point and, you know, hope that some other players jump in against TNN because, uh, yeah, we're unlikely to be able to... Well, it's <laughs> almost impossible <laughs> we're going to take them out by ourselves at this point. Um, so, yeah, that was turn 39.